Hi, so I will show you how to use um, Gut Analysis Toolbox or GET for segmenting neurons. And this is based on the assumption that um, you are using HUE, um, a pan-neuronal neuronal marker for labeling the enteric neurons. So I'll start off with a, a 40 times image, uh, and I'll just show you this before run segmentation. So this is from mouse tissue where the neurons are labeled with HUE, uh, and this was acquired on the 647 channel. So if you want to run the segmentation, click GET, click Analyze Neurons Hue Only, and you select the image location here, Graph Data, I select the image here, and you can see that uh, there aren't any folders here, but when you, when you start running the analysis, it will automatically create a folder called Analysis, and it will store all the analysis results in subfolders, uh, which contain the file name used, which are which the name is the file name used for analysis. So click OK, and it's opened the image. It's run some checks, and now it's segmenting cells. So it's run segmentation, and it's overlaid it on top of the uh, image. And in this step, uh, you it's a manual step where you can verify the accuracy of the segmentation. So I. Uh, there's one bit where it's a bit merged, so I just want to go in and correct it. So this is the ROI manager on the right, and it contains the information uh, pertaining to the outlines for each each cell. So if I click the labels button, the numbers, the sequential, uh, the numbers come up, and, it's in, and the ROIs here are in sequential order. Uh, and here I click on this number, the ROI is highlighted, and I click delete. You can also use a keyboard delete button. Click the freehand tool, and I can just, oops, I'll just draw an ROI here. And once I'm done, press add, or I can use the shortcut T on my keyboard. Similarly, I draw another one here. Now I'm using the keyboard button T, and that's added. And once you've done that, and once you're happy with this um, analysis, um, you can click OK, and before that, uh, if the neuron is not, f uh, if only if the neuron is clipped uh, and it touches the edge of the image, it won't be included. Um, uh, otherwise, as you're not getting the whole of the neuron, and this will be uh, this is the case throughout the analysis. Click OK, and the you get this dialog window saying the analysis is complete. And in this case, the file name is here, and the total number is 57. And now if you look in that folder of uh, where the images are, a folder was created called Analysis, and another subfolder, which is the name of the image, and you get these three files. So close this. So the first one is the label map. And so label map is where each cell is labeled in individual color. Um, then you have the ROI manager as well. You want to use that, and uh, and it has been renamed based on the number of the neurons. So you can, you can show, you can see this uh, as well. But if all you want is the uh, inf the information pertaining to the numbers, you can there is a CSV file which you can open in Excel, and it will contain information, uh, the file name and the number of cells. So this is uh, how to do the neuronal count, and say if you want to. Uh, analyze um, the big tile scan. Uh, so the power here is that you want to use, uh, you want to analyze really large images quickly. So for that, I'll show you this particular tile scan. So this is we used, um, uh, I think it was 40 times objective, and we did a tile scan, or perhaps it was 20, tile, or 20 times. Uh, anyway, we took a tile scan, and uh, this is from mouse. Uh, tissue and the neurons, the enteric neurons are labeled with hue. And you'd like to count, and there's probably around 1,000 to 2,000 cells here. And this is probably one of those cases where you don't want to manually label or count these. So, in order to do this, uh, we, can, we can definitely use a gut analysis toolbox. So, what you can do is you can close this image and I'll hit get and go through the same procedure again, analyze neurons. I select my image here, the tile scan image. Uh, keep the raster settings the same because if you're not sure of the raster settings, just keep it as is. 
we click OK. And now it's open the image and it's running segmentation on this. One key thing to note is if you have really big tile scans, the uh, the RAM consumption does go up. So just be mindful of that. And the time it takes to run the segmentation is dependent on how powerful a computer is. Um, having a GPU is a plus uh, graphics card, but if you don't, that's fine. It'll still use your CPU or your um, central process unit to run, run uh, this analysis. So that's done, and, and you can see that it's reasonably quick, and it's uh, done a reasonably pretty good job at getting more quite a lot of cells. Uh, now, of course, on occasion, if if the staining is non-uniform, um, it still picks it up reasonably well. You can see that uh, it's not as uniform, but it still picks it up really well. But on the really light bits like over here, uh, it may have trouble picking up these cells. And I can show you how to uh, fine-tune this detection. So for now, we've run this analysis. Okay, we're happy with this. Click OK. It creates a label map, and it's done. And that's 2,313 neurons. And that is done in a matter of a few minutes. So close that. And you can see that it has created a folder called TileScan, and uh, your files are there. Now, uh, you want to um, fine-tune your analysis. So to do that, I will show you the folder. So this is our Fiji folder over here. And GAT, or the toolbox, is located in sorry, Fiji, Scripts, GAT, and uh, these are all the files. So if you look at the menu, it's the same thing, organization. Now, uh, in the documentation or on the uh, web, web, GitHub website, you, can, you will be able to get access to this, uh, or on the bi image model, so you will be able to get access to these models. So here, the way the segmentation works is we've used machine learning to um, create a model. Um, so we use annotated data. So we use we, a data where we've manually circled the neurons, and uh, we have this annotated data set, and we used it to create a model which can then recognize what is a neuron and what isn't, thus uh, making it faster. So we use the Stardust as a software here, and uh, and that's present in Fiji. So you get the plugins, you can see it here, Stardust. Uh, and the model, it, and it uses this model file to perform the segmentation. And this model file is located within a models folder. So this is the neuron model, and this is for segmenting the any when you do the neuronal subtype analysis, this is what you use. But for now, just knowing the location and which model to use is important, and this is the model. So uh, in, later on, maybe these version numbers may change, but the name should remain the same. So once uh, once you know where it is, this is probably when you run it for the first time. So this is the reason why I'm showing you this is when you press GAT, and if you want to fine tune these analysis parameters, you want to choose the advanced option. So click on advanced, and I will just increase the size. You can see everything. Uh, so you have the choosing the file here, and we need to choose the model file for segmenting neurons. So, uh, and the reason why I've left it like this is if you wanted to test different models, or if you want to create your own model and want to use it, uh, this will allow you to use this toolbox to run your own models. So. Select the file here, uh, go to data, and I'll select the tile scan. And although I have it here, I'll just show you how to get to that model. Browse, I'll just copy my folder and paste it here. Click open. I'll just go back to show you. So I go to this is my Fiji folder, scripts, get, models, and I select the model. It's a zip file with the enteric neuron in the name. You, should, you shouldn't have Marco in the name. I may rename this later, actually. So click Open, and you'll have 2D entric neuron. So that's a neural model. Uh, for if you're not using uh, these boxes, you can click. Uh, you can just uh, enter NA. We are not calculating subtypes, so we're not checking these boxes. Uh, the main thing you want to tune is this detection parameter right here at the bottom. So this is a neuron detection, and this is what you uh, what is of interest. So the lower the probability, um, the more cells will be detected. So essentially, if your cells are really faint, uh, there's a higher chance that you can detect this. But 
the flip side is if you have a lot of background, uh, it'll it'll think those are cells that'll pick up the background as well. So it always helps to have really strong staining. Uh, but in this case, um, the staining wasn't as strong, so we're going to reduce the number. By default, it's around 0.5. I'll reduce it to 0.3 in this case. Now, overlap threshold. Uh, if you're so because the um, because you're stretching the tissue, uh, depending on how good your stretch is, or say how thick the tissue is, sometimes like in a higher order of uh, mammalian species, uh, such as human and the monkey, the cells overlap a lot. So you can control uh, the overlap. So if there's a lot of overlap, uh, you reduce the value. If there is little to none, I would say use anywhere from 0.4 to 0.5 or higher. So uh, essentially you're saying that there is no, um, uh, you can control the amount of overlap in the um, so yeah, so so in this case, uh, because you use 0.5 as the default earlier, I'm reducing it to 0.3, and I'll leave the overlap threshold as is. So this probability parameter is what you want. So just repeating again, you can if your cells are not if you're really lightly stained cells are not being detected, reduce the probability value. And don't worry about this bottom one. This is for uh, segmenting neuronal markers. So press OK and run the analysis again. In this case, you can see the RAM is going up, the processor is being used, and GPU as well. And you can check the progress or status by looking at the log window. So uh, it will all be printed out here. Yeah. Um, Okay, it, hasn't, it still hasn't picked up all of it, but this is just to show you that you can improve the detection. So see, you can see that it's actually picked up a few more cells here. And uh, it's quite more uniform. So this patch here in the center, uh, there's a light patch here. So it's actually detecting a lot of these cells now. So I would say ready, you can reduce it more and then um, uh, again increase your detection accuracy. So let's, we can try that again. So press OK. Uh, and look. In this case, I want to try it. I want to try I reduce my uh, probability again. So close, and I'll go to advanced, and I'll go to the bottom for now, and I will reduce it to maybe 0.2. It, this is a quite a it is a trial and error in this case. So once you figure out what works, you can just stick to that. Uh, one advantage is when you do your analysis, uh, once you've entered the parameters here, you don't need to change it every time. Fiji remembers it. That's okay. Uh, let's see if this improves it. So still running the segmentation again. It's almost finishing up. If you wanted to really see what is going on, you can go to Window and Console, and you can see the output from the plugin. You can see uh, the output from here. If there's any errors, also this will be quite informative. So yeah, it's done a good job. I mean, I think it's detected a few more cells. Uh, and you have to be careful that you don't want to be detecting or picking up background. In this case, the staining is reasonably clean. Um, uh, but if you have big blobs or patches, it'll, it may start detecting those. So you just need to be mindful of that. Uh, press OK, and yeah, and that's done. And you can see that it's detected a few more cells than earlier. Now, when you're performing the analysis and you're reporting parameters, just make sure you mention what probability, what overlap threshold you used, and uh, what pixel size. Uh, so in this case, this parameter here. Uh, what pixels are? By default, is 0.7. If you haven't changed it, that's fine. Uh, those are two, three parameters you need to be mindful of. So now, if I go to analysis, uh, dial scan, uh, you can see my files here. And I can just click on the newest one. You see, it says 2516 cells. So, thank you.